Okay. Uh, so today we are going to be looking at the, um, hold on, make sure I'm volumized here. Okay. Today we're going to be looking at the back bodice. Uh, last week we draped the front bodice. And when we draped the front bodice, we draped it Uh, we draped the front bodice. We draped draped everything to the mannequin's right, which is my left. And when we did that, um, that gave us a center front line that faces to the right uh, when we're looking down at it. Um, but it's actually the mannequin's left-ish. So uh, that's going to help us figure out where we need to drape today because whenever you drape something you want to make sure if it's a symmetrical design, if it's asymmetrical, you're figuring it out as you go. But if you're going to drape something that is symmetrical, you always drape the connecting part. So in this case, if we draped this part of the mannequin right here, we're going to be draping this part of the mannequin to continue the back. And the back presents itself with a few issues. Uh, one of which is the shape. So let's look at the back for just a second from the side. You'll notice that, oops, sorry. If you look at the front right here, it's pretty smooth. It's pretty smooth and flat right here. But if you look at the back, It's not flat here. It goes in and then it comes out. This small of the back right here, as it comes out, goes over the seat. And that's, you know, it depends on how much of a, of a difference there is between the small of the back and how full the seat is. On the mannequin, it's pretty gentle. But on somebody who has a fuller seat, it can be very dramatic. Um, as we sort of look at the way this shape works, you'll notice that it does cut in. So our shape here is going to be more sort of curved down to the waist versus here, which is pretty flat against the front. So this presents a, a slight issue. Well, not really an issue, but just uh, presents a different way of looking at this dart. This dart is not going to be as deep as the front just because you're not going from such a high point down to nothing. This is all pretty flat back here as it curves into the back. So if you look here, the apex on the front is pretty high versus where it's going to end up as far as the dart's concerned. Back here, it's all pretty smooth. Now, there is an apex on the back. Oops. It's the shoulder blade. And you can kind of see it a little bit here, how it sort of comes out to this point. It's not sharp and pronounced, but it is there. So in order to counteract that, we're going to have to have something that allows us to smooth over the shoulder without having a, an excess of fabric gaping over the armhole. And in order to do that, we use a dart. Now, as far as the drape is concerned, it starts the same way as the front. So we're going to begin with a straight line. We're looking at the mannequin. We're estimating fabric above. And below the waist, above the shoulder and below the waist. OK, so for this, let me get this in frame. Hold on. OK, we're stopping at the waist. Now, this is going to be a little awkward because I'm draping off to this side, and it does not benefit me to be on the other side. 
So my line has been drawn on the fabric and I'm going to place a pin towards the neck and I'm going to follow the straight line of the mannequin's back. And you can see it right there, right there. And I'm placing the line that I drew on the muslin exactly on the back. And I am going to put a few pins, just, to, just three or four pins in, just to hold it in place. Now I've, well, actually that's wrong because I didn't put that correct spot. So I need to make sure I move this up because I don't have enough fabric covering the shoulder up here. I was talking and I wasn't paying attention to what I'm doing. So I'm just going to push this up a little bit and repin. And what that does is it gives me more fabric to work with, which is always nice. Okay. Now that I have that pinned, what I want to do is start to figure out how I can attack this. You see that finding the path of least resistance on a drape is your best option. So as I drape, as I smooth the fabric across, where are my, where am I getting the fewest pull lines? Where am I getting the least resistance? I'm probably getting it right through here because this is the flattest part of the mannequin before I start to cave into the small of the back or go over the shoulder. So right here is probably where I can start to think about sort of putting a pin to hold it in place. And that's all this pin is doing. And now I don't have to constantly hold up the fabric. So you can, again, like I said, whenever you're draping, you always have multiple you know, avenues of attack. You can sit back and um, sort of start with the dart or you can do the shoulder or whatever you wanna do. Now, some mannequins, depending on and you can see I'm not really even doing anything and I've got a dart, I've got the darts forming here. Uh, some mannequins, it depends on the shape of the mannequin, it depends on the structure or whatever. Uh, sometimes it's better not to have a shoulder dart and sometimes you have to have a shoulder dart. So I'm gonna show you how to do this by adding a shoulder dart in whether you need it or not. So for this, I'm just going to sort of like estimate fabric here. And that's all I'm doing is estimating fabric. And you can see all I'm doing is just wrapping this around. I just put a pin here just to hold it in place. And the natural tendency for this is to take this dart right here and then just have it go all the way up until it ends. And that's wrong. What this ends up, well, it's not wrong in the sense of a pattern, but it is wrong in the sense of a sloper. So in a pattern, you could have a dart that goes all the way up here, but you're so close to the shoulder at this point, you might as well just turn it into a seam. So when you're dealing with a dart on a sloper, you want to make sure that the dart ends in a specific place. You'll also notice that when I grab this, I just grabbed it and sort of like started to form it up there for you know the demo. But um, it's how long that dart is. That's it's too long. And you'll also notice that I didn't really place this anywhere. I just sort of like put it here. Well, I had a student who was who had sent me a question saying oh, she was having issues with getting the dart in the right place. And I'm going to show you how to sort of figure that out on the mannequin. And then when we get to the pattern drafting of this, I'm going to show you how to fix it on paper. So when you're dealing with a dart, you want to get in a specific spot. What you need to do, see if I can do this. What you're doing is you're just rolling the fabric in your fingers. Just back and forth like that, wherever you need that dart to go. And do you see what I'm doing? As I'm just rotating, I'm just sliding that dart wherever I need that dart to go. I'm just walking it across 
the back. So you don't want to just sort of like start forcing it into place because it won't work. You'll have pull lines and it'll be a nightmare and it won't be fun and it won't be, it won't look good. Uh, you'll get funny angles. So what you want to do is just leave the fabric where it is and then just rotate, just sort of like roll the dart where it needs to go. Now, where we want this dart to go ultimately is around the princess line. But we're not going to really worry about exactly where it hits the princess line because we can fix that once we get to the, to the, um, to the skirt. And the reason I'm having you do this in the beginning is like, it's probably very easy to sit back and draw a billion guidelines on this and just plot this, plot this out, draw the dart and be done with it. Well, at that point, we basically just drafted it. So this first project for the sloper, again, this is probably why I consider myself like this weird hippie draper, is you need to figure out this stuff as the fabric is telling you what to do. So when I say stuff like, oh, okay, get it around the princess line, it just means get it around the princess line. I'm going to show you uh, on Monday when we transfer these to paper, I'm going to show you how to get everything lined up where it needs to be. And we really don't even know where those need to be yet because we haven't done the skirt. And the skirt's going to dictate when we create those darts, we can move those where we need to move them to get them to line up with the dart on the bodice. So don't panic if you're doing this and you don't get the dart exactly on the uh, princess line because I can show you how to move things around, okay? Now, on this sloper, when we have a little bit of volume right here, it's okay. You don't want this skin tight right here. You want a little bit of ease in there, but you don't actually have to build it in on the side seam. What you can do is um, let this just hang out here and this will be enough for the back. And you can see, like, if you've added enough ease, I'm going to hold this to the front. See how the fabric is sort of moving around right there? You can see, like, I can sort of, like, widget around versus something like this where it's so tight, there's no movement here. Um, that's too tight. Whereas this, if you can do this, that's way too loose. So there's going to be this weird little sort of butter zone in there, Goldilocks zone, that lets us know exactly where we need to have, exactly how much we need to leave in there. You also want to make sure that as you do this, when you form the dart down here, you don't want so much excess up here that you get... that really long dart that goes all the way up to the shoulder. You do not want that. So there's this, you know, there's always this little like Goldilocks zone, I guess we'll keep calling it that, that lets you know where you need to end the dart. Now, where do you need to end the dart? Do you remember the pin we put in there? That pin represents approximately where the armhole is. We can always change it. But when I put the fabric over here, when I end that dart, I don't want, so like, let's say that this pin, you can see this better. This pin right here represents where that little mark is that we made with the other pin, where the armhole is. That's where you want the dart to end. You don't really want the dart to go in past the armhole eh, for a sloper. It can be for a pattern or whatever you're doing, but for a sloper, you really want that dart below where the armhole is. Is that always in stone? Not necessarily. There might be an instance where you're doing something for a custom body uh, that you don't have a choice. You have to run that dart up past the armhole. And that just might be what it is because um, everybody is different. Literally, every body is different. So it just depends on, on shape, form, you know, body fat, muscle, whatever. So um, for us, we're dealing with a mannequin that has 0% body fat. 
So what we need to do is we need to kind of just give ourselves a little bit of room here to where that dart wants to naturally end around the armhole, which is right there. So all I'm doing here is just smoothing out along the side. I haven't clipped. I haven't done anything else. All I'm doing is smoothing out here. And you'll also notice that I'm, well, you can't see, but I'm kind of keeping an eye on this line right here. I'm keeping an eye on, let's see if I can put this up. I'm keeping an eye on this line right here because I don't want this skewing off of center of the center back. I want this on the center back, but you'll notice I haven't really pinned anything here. There's no reason to pin it because we're going to cut that off. But it's still a nice visual that gives you an idea of what's happening to that center back line. So as I do this, I'm just going to start smoothing out. And all I'm doing is putting a couple of pins to hold things in place. Now that we have our pins in place, now, oh, see, I'm a little off, but we can fix that in just a second. Now we can start to clip. And remember, because we're stopping at the waist, I can clip up towards the waist. Okay? And that helps to relax all that tension there. And also, because I am stopping at the waist, I can get rid of a good deal of that fabric because there's no reason to have it because we're stopping at the waist. Now, at this point, you can start to smooth things out. So my dart right here, see, I'm getting some pull lines right there. So if I loosen up that pin, just loosen it up and put that pin back, I'll sort of fix a lot of my problems. This is something that a lot of students just do not understand. You don't have to be like a professional draper to just take a pin out, let it relax, and then put the pin back. That's it. Uh, still getting a little bit of tension. So I'm going to clip up. Okay. I'm just going to clip up a little bit to relieve some of that tension. And then while I'm here on the side, I am going to continue clipping and I'm going to get rid of what I don't need on the side. So it's exactly like we did for the front, exactly like we did for the front. You're just getting rid of extra fabric you don't need. And here you can still see, you can still see my side seam kind of sort of through there. So I've got plenty of fabric. Also, if you keep getting a pull line right there, you can clip into the fabric and it releases all that tension because all we need is from this seam to the waist inside. I don't need anything past it. I don't need anything below the waist. Now, the other question is, well, how tight does the dart have to be at the waist? And that's, well, like we talked about ease last time, it's kind of up to you. If you want it a little bit more fitted, you can, but look what happens. If I do it too tight, what happens? I go off of center back. So if I leave center back where it is and just let the fabric tell me what it wants to do, then I immediately know exactly how much I need to have. You'll also notice that by sort of estimating where I needed to put those pins just earlier, just smoothing the fabric out, making sure I had a little bit of play up here, uh, just smoothing it out around the armhole, you'll notice that I don't really have to do a whole lot more work with this. All I have to do is just take the dart and it's immediately gonna tell me where it needs to finish, which is right here. All this is doing is just taking the dart from the, from the bulk of the intake running my fingers up and it immediately ends right there, which is well below my armhole. 
Now, it'll be around this area. So I just put a couple of pins in and try to keep that dart as straight as possible, but it's okay, we'll fix it later. Okay, and that's like half the work done. It's just a side seam right here. Put another pin in here. Now I am getting a little bit of tension and you can tell that there's tension because if you look, the fabric is pulling away from the mannequin. So we don't really want that. So what we can do is just clip it a little bit. And see, now it'll stay against the mannequin more. You see that? Just with a couple of clips. And that tells me that all that tension is gone. I didn't need 20,000 clips. I just needed a couple. That's all I needed. Now I have a smooth side seam, a smooth waist, and a smooth dart. That's it. Okay. Now, let's look at, hold on, let's look at the armhole. I'm still getting a little bit of tension around here. So what I'm going to do is just, like we did before on the front, all I'm going to do is cut away a little bit of the armhole. I'm not carving where it needs to go exactly. I'm just getting rid of a little bit of the armhole. I can get rid of this pin now because everything's relaxed. Now I can focus on the neck. So here, oops. Okay, so same rules apply. To clip into the neck, you're gonna clip straight down into the neck. Don't go all the way to the, to the base of the neck because you might not need to. And then just get rid of the little tabs as you go around. And what that does is it starts to smooth out the shoulder. Now, you'll notice that as I smooth out the shoulder, it is perfectly smooth over the shoulder, which is good. But, look, we now have a little bit of a gap between the bodice threads everywhere, the bodice and the mannequin. So I, I can put my finger in there. There's so much space. Well, what do you think that is? That is a dart wanting to form over the shoulder blade. Now, if you've taken flat one, this probably makes some sense because on your sloper bodice for your back, uh, your back sloper bodice, you do have a dart right there and you have to draft it in. Well, this is basically sort of proof of concept for that. What you can do at this point is sort of lift the shoulder, smooth over the shoulder from both the neck and the shoulder. Let's see, if, I don't know how, what the best way to do this is. Let's see. Does that make sense? Let's see if I can get this up a little bit. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, so if I didn't do anything, I'd have a nice smooth shoulder, just like that. Ah. Okay. So if I didn't do anything, I'd have a nice smooth shoulder right there. But... I don't want a big old gap on the armhole because it's going to alter the measurement for the armhole that I need. So what I'm going to do is lift up the shoulder, smooth out the armhole here, which is now smooth and there's no more gap. 
I'm just gonna stick a pin just to hold it in place. Then I'm gonna smooth out from the neck over, put a pin in somewhere just to hold it in place. And you can now see that a dart wants to form. All we've done is take that dart from a horizontal position at the armhole and moved it to the shoulder. So now I can form this dart. And there it is. This dart is technically supposed to be around three and a half inch, three to three and a half inches long. Here's the problem with that measurement. It just depends on the shape of your mannequin. It can be as short as two inches. It can be as long as four inches. It just depends on the mannequin. So for this, I'm probably going to get pro barely three inches on this. Okay. So once you have this, sort of take the dart and I'm rolling it over to the princess line. Don't worry about alignment right now because we can fix that on paper. But if you need to get it exactly perfect, just sort of roll it along and get it over the princess line as much as you possibly can. And I'm just going to put a couple of pins in here. I can get my pin through the fabric, okay? Don't worry about the width of the intake. That is just going to be what it is. And just taper it down to zero down from the back. And you'll also notice, like I, you see, I still have some movement in here. So that's enough ease in there. Uh, also, check over here. I have, if I release this a little bit, I might have a little, my, I might have pulled this a little too tight as I was doing it. That looks okay. But this line can distort if you're not paying attention. So if it is distorted, if you, oh, sorry. Okay, so pay attention to this line. Sorry about that. As you're as you're draping, if you see that it's distorted, that means you pull too much on this side. It's an easy fix. Just release the pins on the side seam. See what I'm doing? I'm just slightly pulling this back, just slightly. I'm just I'm not doing anything but like running my fingers across it slightly pulling that back and it relaxes everything and your line goes straight again so if you need to double check your tension over here also it's okay to have a little bit of well it says puffiness uh, a little bit of puffiness right here it's okay because that's going to get once that dart gets drawn it's going to, when it gets sewn, um, when it gets pressed, it gets pressed correctly. Um, it gets pressed flat, the shape of the dart as it's sewn. So if you have a big wad of fabric here, you did something wrong. But if you have a little bit of ease right here, it's a good thing because you don't want it super tight right there. Now, again, if you were to do ease, if you did ease on the front versus ease on, you know, you put ease on the back, you'd have to do the same thing that you did on the front. So remember how we drew the line and then we moved it back? I, again, I'm not going to bother with that because I don't care if this sloper fits anyone. But ultimately, um, you whatever you did to the front, you will need to do to the back. But um, again, I don't, I don't know. I figure you can always add ease if you need to add ease or make things bigger or oversized. Um, you could also take it in. So it's, it's 
one's not better than the other. It's just what you want to do. Uh, if you want to add ease, add ease. If you don't want to add ease, you don't have to add ease. Okay. Also, I think I'm okay on the neck. I'm okay on the shoulder. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to clip a little bit more at the neck. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about the armhole. On the front, because of how people are built, we need a deeper armhole in the front that allows us to move forward. On the back, it's not going to be as deep. On paper, I'm going to show you how to equalize these armholes. And what that does is it allows us to just set a sleeve in without having to do any like extra stuff to it. So as uh, once we get to paper, which is I think we do on Monday, um, I don't know if we do the skirt first or the other one, but anyway, once we get to paper, I'll show you how to equalize these in measurement only, not in shape, because this is flatter than this, because our arms are in forward, they're not backwards. Um, so anyway, just double check and make sure everything else that you've, you know, that you need to drape on this. So you've got your waist done, your, um, i take that in from the side. I'm just correcting the pins in here as I have them. Uh, you don't need to take this dart and make it skin tight. You don't need to make this dart skin tight. Uh, in fact, you probably shouldn't do that. You just want to make sure that it is, um, you want to make sure that it is comfortable against the mannequin. If you can, like I said, if you can kind of like run your finger and see the fabric move a little bit, like that, see how the fabric's moving, then it's okay. If your drape is so tight your A, getting pull lines, and B, you can't move the fabric, then you've draped it way too fitted. So if you can just move the fabric just slightly, you're okay. The only time you don't really want a whole lot of fabric to move is if you're doing something strapless. And even then, you kind of have to, we'll, we'll do a strapless garment in here. And you'll see what I'm talking about. But um, it actually, you know, once you do that, it's sort of like you, you kind of have to, it's like, a, it's like a game of chicken or something. You got to see how tight can you actually get it before you start to distort seams. But with this, you don't want it super duper tight. You just want to be able to like run your finger over it and be able to move the fabric still. Now, if you're getting huge lumps, sorry. If you're getting huge lumps of fabric like that, where you're getting actually, you could form darts and seams, then you 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 haven't done it fitted enough to the mannequin. But of course, it all depends on how you want the garment to fit. In this, in the case of a sloper here, I don't want it to be super loose, and I don't want it to be skin tight. Um, I do just need it to be over the mannequin body because then I can manipulate it however I want. And remember. Uh, as you add ease, if you choose to add ease or if you need a little ease, you can just like add a little bit. You don't have to add like a half an inch to each side, which you probably don't want. Um, on certain slopers, or certain drafts, they'll have like anywhere from about half an inch around to two inches of ease built into the bust area, which I think is a little excessive, but whatever. Um, so it's up to you. Okay. Once you have your drape done and that's it, that's, that's the entire drape right there. There's absolutely nothing else about this. That's it. Um, so it's just the dart center back waist and stuff. I'm going to mark this and then we're going to take this off the mannequin. Just a second. Somebody moved my marker and that somebody was me. Hold on.
Even though I did it, I'm still blaming somebody else. Okay, so for marking this, remember we talked about um, the waist, are you top, middle, or bottom? And again, I'm marking this at a, at a funny angle. So my marks are gonna be sloppy, but that's okay. Uh, mark the waist, center back. I'm going to mark the neck. And the neck needs to be marked as close to the mannequin neck as possible up to the shoulder line. And then I'm marking, oops, sorry, I cannot see this. Woo, way off. Then I'm marking, oh my gosh, I cannot see today. The shoulder line here. My shoulder's a mess because I, I can't really do a whole lot of altering on it. Um, okay. Then again, with the armhole, around where the mannequin stops right there, we're going to talk, we got a whole section on armholes, so don't worry about it. And then I'm just following the shape of the armhole and I'm taking it to that little pin that I have. And you can see it's a different shape. I'm just following the shape of the armhole. I'm not doing anything fancy. And again, I will show you how to clean this up. I think that unless you're doing a really stylized armhole that has like a specific shape to it or like a raglan line or something, I think you just need to give yourself a pinpoints or like a generic shape and then clean it up on paper every time. Cause it's like at one point your armhole is just never going to be correct because once you do this, you have to do something else to it to actually make it function, which we'll talk about. So here I'm just going to, again, I would normally be in front of this doing this, but I can't do that if you, so you can see it. So my lines are really sloppy, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you how to clean all that up. In fact, I tend to do this in class anyway, make things really sloppy. So I can show you that even if you're a terrible marker on here, if you'll just give yourself a couple of pinpoints, you can draft the pattern perfectly. Okay, so here with the dart, um, my dart is gonna end about right there. So I always give myself a cross mark like that. And then what I do is I mark where the pins are. On both sides. What we're gonna do is create a dart, but again, we might need to move it. So all we need are the core measurements, which is exactly what we have on here, okay? And one last thing to do. Mark the shoulder dart. Again, same way. And when you get here where it ends, Make a cross mark. And those look like they connect. And I'm gonna do both sides. Hold on. Okay. And while you're here, give yourself some labels. So the center back, this is bodice, back, sloper. And if we were in class, I'd have you put your initials or something on here. Okay. Now that's basically it. It goes by pretty quickly. So, I'm gonna go ahead and take all these pins out. Now, this would be actually, a, well, like the first one too, this would be like a little bit of a longer lesson just because um, you would be doing it as we do it in class and I can correct your mistakes. But, there you go. And you can see, oops. That it looks like an honest to goodness sloper. 
So that takes all like the middleman out of dealing with the drape. I mean, sorry, with the draft if you're working in flat one. So this basically gives you everything that you need without having to worry about the measurements and those weird angles and things. So you see, this is the shape of this armhole here. Uh, again, it's not in stone. We can change it as we need to. And let's see if I can move this over. You can see that this is the front. If I could connect. And those two sides would match. Hopefully they match. And you can see the shape of the armhole sort of forming. And we'll clean this up as we get it to paper. We'll clean this up when we get it to paper. And as we go through this semester, what's going to happen is all of this as we work on it will get more and more refined. In the beginning, um, it, it sort of helps just to kind of get your hands dirty. So if your lines aren't perfect, don't worry about it. But as you go through the semester, as we learn more and more and more, what's going to happen is all of these points, all of these things where the darts go, where things happen, all of that will start to make sense. And what you can do is refine your lines and make your marks way cleaner and stuff. So in the beginning, it's okay to kind of like be a little bit sloppy. I know probably there's some atelier director throwing himself out of a window right now or something screaming at me. But I do think in the beginning, at least from my experience with students, if you sort of sort of tell yourself, okay, I have to have lines here and lines here and lines here, you're basically just drafting it. And I don't think you're really learning how to drape. And I think you need to learn how to drape because we can correct anything on a pattern at all. Um, you know, anything at all. So uh, let me grab an example of something I've been working on personally. And give me just a second and I'll show you where this can end up. Okay. So as you sort of like start to drape things or whatever, and we're, we're, we're not here yet, but you know, this is just an example I could grab. So what you can do ultimately is create things that um, can lead to other things. So when you talk about a sloper, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bodice or something like that. You can make something that this might not be centered, but that's okay. You can make something that is completely, you know, simple. So for me, when I was making this piece, I wanted to create a sloper that is a foundation piece that I could then drape on top of. So I created a simple design that has a, the lines that I need on here that I can then do whatever I need to to this. So this can be a um, this can be a drape. It's going to be a foundation for something underneath. I can extend this out and make um, you know continue the drape and do like a strapless dress. I can add a skirt to this. I can do a lot of stuff to this one pattern. And so I could consider this a sloper to some degree. Also, as we know, um, as far as pattern making is concerned, when you have like a wide open space, now that I've draped this, I can create more lines here. I can create different seams. I can create anything I want based on this one basic sloper. So um, when you're dealing with this, you can easily create any kind of basic anything you want on the mannequin. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a bodice or something like that. You can easily translate any of these skills into what this is just pinned hastily into whatever you want to do. So as we do these slopers, you're not necessarily limited to exactly what we've done here. Uh, I think draping really excels when you start with something and then build on it with pattern making skills. I've been working on a few different 
garments for simplification or whatever. And, you know, it just depends on how much you want to do, how far you want to take it. I got one more. Hold on. Okay, so this is sort of like a work in progress thing that I've been working with, um, sort of like a weird top. So we'll actually do all of this. We'll get into collars and all kinds of stuff and later on. Uh, but when you start to work with a mannequin, one of the things is as you deal with it, you sort of learn things that you would never have normally learned working in flat, in flat pattern. So one of the problems that you can come in contact with and again, how you, how, like looking at this as like a sloper, uh, ignore the burn marks. Um, so the concept here is to have a tie that wraps around to the front. And so one of the biggest issues that we run into, especially on certain garments, is this area right here. What ends up happening is you get a lot of gapping right here. So kind of relating this back to the sloper, as we start to work with that and we start to deal with that armhole and we start to equalize it and get it corrected, you'll see that once we get like an established point on the slopers, we can start to use that point on other garments for whatever you're working with. Um, this will make, again, a lot more sense once we get to it. But, uh, you know, just dealing with basic shapes and stuff like that, these are sometimes the hardest things to get correct. So we're going to be dealing with a princess line later on. And again, this is just a hasty thing I've been like sort of like playing with. Um, but you can see that as we go through this and we start to drape, and you'll be able to do any of these. I mean, these are easy. Um, you'll be able to do any of this stuff as we get through it. Um, you can start to really create things that can be whatever kind of sloper you want. The one we're doing is pretty dry and boring. That's why I don't really particularly care for it. But like the same thing with this is a little strapless thing. We have a, a bodice here that I can now fan out, make it a fuller dress, shorten it, make it a crop top, whatever. I mean, you can start to look at these things and consider them slopers that can you can get permutations of ideas as you go along. So um, as we deal with slopers, for a couple of more weeks, um, it'll make a lot more sense as far as their practicality, okay? Um, I think this is kind of like the, the sloper idea that works better for draping than an actual drafted sloper. So, but this is a personal thing. If you might like your drafted sloper, it's up to you, okay? So, um, are there any questions? If you have any, feel free to ask them in chat. Feel free to send them via email. Um, that's all we're going to be accomplishing today. Uh, so we will have a, um, we're going to be turning these into paper on Monday. And I'll show you what we need to do and how we need to go back and refine them once we get the skirt done. Actually, I don't know. I haven't decided really. I, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this, at least on video. I don't know if we should do the skirt next and then put everything on paper or if we should do the bias and the skirt separately. We might actually just draft, we might actually just drape the skirt next time, but I don't want to do too much in one video because the skirt's involved and we got to deal with the front and the back in one thing. Okay. So, um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. If you have any questions, chat, uh, I'm sorry, canvas, or email or um, hit anything in the chat. If not, I will see you all on Monday. And let's see, is there some time to show us how to prep the fabric with line? Uh, yeah, actually I can do that. Um, it's gonna be a little weird. I can just do a little swatch right here because I'm sort of on a, on a, the way I have this, the way I have this set up. If you'll give me like two minutes, I can set this up. I can switch my, um, I could switch my setup right here. Uh, give me like two minutes and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, hold on.
Okay, I'm back. Okay, so we're going to treat this like a big piece of fabric, but it's basically the exact same thing. Um, so once you have your fabric uh, torn, and you can see that all these edges are just torn edges, idealistically, you'd press this. You want to make sure everything's pressed. And sometimes, hold on, let me see if I can do this. Sometimes when you get your fabric, it's going to be a little wonky. And you can see that if that's a straight line, it's going to be sort of skewed. What you can do is straighten up the grain a little bit. And if this is a small piece or if this is a big piece, it doesn't matter. The same, it's the same technique. So what you're going to do is corner to corner, and this typically needs to be torn edges, okay? Corner to corner, you're going to pull as hard as you can a few times. And what this does is it realigns the grain. And then you can kind of pull on the edges here and here, okay? And what that does is it straightens everything out again. Now, this was pretty straight to begin with, so I didn't have that much uh, change. And at this point, I would go back and I would press it. And when you press it, don't try to like distort it again. Just press it lightly to keep get it flat. Use a little water if you have to, to get it flat. Okay. Now, when you're doing this, if this is like, let's say we've estimated the amount of fabric that we need, and this is exactly how much we need. It's over the shoulder and past the waist. So I need to go ahead and just prep this for, um, I need to prep this for draping. So I've got a little quilting ruler here. Hopefully it's not as reflective as the other one. Uh, idealistically use your, use your, um, your view through ruler. But what this is, you can see this a little bit better. Um, this is about an inch away from the raw edge. You can see my psych light over here. And what you do is just an inch away from the edge, you're going to draw a straight line. Same thing. Just, you know, if you have a short ruler, that's fine. Just draw it straight. Now, you'll also notice here, I'm putting the bulk of the ruler against the line I just drew. And right here, you can see that it's a little off. That's okay. Don't panic about that. Just continue to draw your straight line against the ruler. Now, that little eighth of an inch is not going to bother me. If this was silk chiffon, I would be terrified of that. Well, I wouldn't be marking it with a marker anyway. But if this was silk chiffon, I'd be terrified of that eighth of an inch because that means that's a huge issue with such a light, wedgy fabric. On muslin, I'm not really going to cry about it. That's okay to work with right there. Okay? Now, that line will represent either center back or center front as you're draping on the bodice and in turn on the skirt as well. These can also be panel pieces for, um, these can also be panel pieces for princess lines or whatever. So that's basically it. You just need to take your ruler and place it one inch away from the edge. Now I say one inch, you don't necessarily have to keep it one inch. If you want to, you can do a half an inch. Um, when you're dealing with something, and we'll talk about this later when we get into it, but sometimes there's going to be, so let's pretend that doesn't exist. Yeah, let's go see it on both sides. Okay. So we're going to pretend the, the blue line doesn't exist. Okay. So with this, sometimes you need to mark things further in because you have a center front plus an extension. And again, we'll do this later on, but what you can do is, well, let's just do it this way. Okay. So I've marked my center. I've marked my, um, my, like, let's say that's where I need my extension to end. I'm going to mark another inch away from that in hot pink. Okay, I'm going to mark a half inch, I'm going to mark an inch away from that. That way, that purple edge is now the fold edge, 
And this now represents center front. And what that lets me do is have that inch that is an extension, plus I also have extra fabric to work with if I need to. So there are times when you're marking your fabric that you need to add more to the edge because you'll have to do like a button extension or a facing or something and um, or just like an overlap. And we will do a design like this later on. So you might need this information. Um, so that'll get you uh, where you need to go if you need extra fabric. And when in doubt, like I say, always give yourself plenty of fabric outside of what you're working on so that you have, ex so if you need a clip or you need extra fabric, you need to move stuff in or out, you have plenty of room. Also, for whatever reason, if you need to, and we will do a design like this after the, after the slopers, if you need to, you can use a little square like this to give yourself a cross line. And all I did was put this up against that line and then draw the cross line against it. This can be used to mark waists. This can be used to mark placement of things. And again, we have a design where we'll actually do this. So this is a little ahead of that, but that's basically it for creating that line. You just take your fabric and line it up against that edge an inch away and draw it in. That's it. You have any questions about that? It's pretty simple. Uh, just make sure that you do tear your edges. It's easier that way. I know sometimes I just cut quickly and I'm done with it too. But um, yeah, but this is an easy way to sort of do that. You don't have to think about it. And again, if you have like, here's that inch all the way down. And at the very end, I have just like a little bit off down here. Again, I'm not going to cry about that on muslin. If you're working with something that's really soft and drapey, yeah, you need to cry about that because that can really ruin your design if you're not paying attention to it. But as far as putting a line against center front, uh, it's not that big of a deal, especially on something as stiff as muslin. Okay? Uh, you're welcome. So if anybody has any more questions, you're more than welcome to... I think I've covered everything as far as... That's concerned. Um, oh, let me just show you this because I'm thinking about it. So make sure that when you're pinning a dart, in case you couldn't see it, so you've got the dart like this and it's sticking out from the body, you're pinning like that, where you can see the pin on both sides, okay? And you're marking it on that pin and you're marking both sides like that and like let's say that's a giant dart you're marking the pins like that okay just in case you didn't see that before and what that does is it marks both sides and as it's against the mannequin that fin is sticking up okay what i see a lot of students do is this And that absolutely does nothing. They'll just stick pins in like this on the mannequin. And I'm like, well, and I walk over, I do that, and they're immediately gone. So make sure that you're pinning that little shark spin up like that. That way it doesn't come out. Okay? So uh, this should be it. Uh, you guys, have, I know, it seems like we never actually meet in this class. We have holidays and hurricanes and all kinds of good stuff. So. Um, I will see you all on Monday if you have any questions in the meantime. If you're working on this on your own, by all means, email me pictures of what you're working on. I can usually walk people through uh, issues that they're having. So if you want to, you can do that or send me an email, questions or Canvas, uh, any of that good stuff. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I will see you all on Monday. Bye.